This time on Sailing Hideaway, let's talk about raising the mast. Probably a good idea to invite some friends. Probably wouldn't hurt to insinuate that there may be refreshments involved. But before they all get here, there's a few things we need to talk about. Just you and me. But I don't want to get into the real technique or the equipment as much as I want to talk about just the um, doing this in general. After all, you can find plenty of information online or on YouTube. In fact, uh, I found my information on about a 25-foot Catalina that was kept at a dock on a river. Uh, the owner needed a way to lower the mast to get underneath the bridge. The system is made out of two pieces of metal electrical conduit, and those are attached to the uh, chain plates. And then, of course, you put the usual block and tackles on and, and uh, build your, um, your stern support and all that and just continue to raise it. However, when I uh, tried to use that system on Hideaway, I ran into a bit of a problem. It seems there's a difference between the two boats. The Catalina 25 has chain plates that are thicker and constructed differently than the uh, chain plates that are on my Compact 23. This might sound obvious, but it wasn't to me at the time. So I built the rig and attached it to my forward chain plate. And as I began to raise the mast, I realized we had a problem. Uh, the chain plate was going to bend, and that is not a good thing. The next closest anchor would be the stanchions. And those are through-bolted and back-plated and very strong. So I, uh, rather, than you, rather than making something out of metal, I came up with this little invention made out of plywood and some bolts. To give you an example of how different boats are, my Compact 23 is hull number 2. As it happens, the mast step on Hideaway is a one-of-a-kind invention that was put on many years ago by the first owner. It's massive. It can withstand more stress than the factory-built mast step. So what you see us doing here may not even apply to your Compact 23 or even the 19. This is an important concept. If you, if you try to do something that uh, was designed for a different boat, you could do some serious damage to yourself or the boat or somebody else's boat. I didn't really think about that too much. Now, you got to keep in mind uh, how often you're going to do something. In the case of the hideaway, we've been partners now for 21 years. During that 21-year period, we may have had the mass down five times. That might give rise to a different system, you know, because we don't have to use it as often. Uh, these wood blocks work fine uh, for what I'm doing. However, I did see on the uh, compact owner's site a more elegant idea. The captain removed one of the bolts on the base of the stanchion and substituted an eye bolt preferably stainless steel, I'm sure, but the eye bolt allows you to clip to the uh, setup rather than mess around with a bunch of little wing nuts and such that I do. This is the uh, first time we've tried to raise the mast while it's on the trailer. Uh, most of the time, we were in the water in a wet slip, and if we needed to do something on the mast, we just dropped it in our wet slip, and the mast would lay across the uh, one of the dock boxes, and we could do whatever maintenance we needed. And then myself and a son or two or a friend uh, would just muscle the thing back up. Not a big deal. It's a little different when you're doing a high wire act. But now that we have the uh, block and tackle and the fulcrum advantage, I thought we were going to be uh, sailing good. When I moved the location of my, uh, my mast raising system, all of a sudden, it seems to have shrank in height. My thoughts about this were that the metal pipe really needs to end at the attachment on the bow. But I'm not so sure that really matters, because by the time the um, fulcrum gets the mast up, the uh, metal pipes there could rest on the bows without any real issue. That would give me a lot more power, and it would make the mast raising a lot easier. 
the other big mistake we made on this particular uh, adventure, I allowed the, um, uh, the, the tackle to become twisted in the block. You can, you can see how long they are. It's probably about 8 or 10 feet, and there was only one twist in it. But that acted as a tremendous break, and it made uh, raising the mast extremely difficult. In fact, it was beyond what I could do. I had to get uh, my, my much younger, stronger son to bring it up the rest of the way. I couldn't understand at the time why it was so hard, because the last time it wasn't. It was really easy. I could sit down and with one arm just crank it up or lower it without any real effort. That's the beauty of block and tackle. So that was a crucial mistake. Uh, we had enough people there to uh, make sure we didn't really do something bad, but it would have been almost impossible for me to do that by myself or my wife and I. The other mistake that I had made, and I didn't realize that it was a mistake until it was almost too late. That's usually how mistakes happen. I had built a, a wooden boom crutch that has held that mass for many more months than I want to admit during our refit. And I had it tied down to the stern rail. I don't really have good pictures of that, unfortunately. Uh, but it was tied and cross-tied, and I had metal plates that kind of held the joints together because it was so long in the weather. I kind of wanted to be able to uh, get rid of that, or in other words, kick it overboard as we were in the process, because I thought it would be in the way, or if one of the uh, staves would happen to catch on it, I, I just wanted to be able to dump it quickly. Well, that was a nice thought, but in reality... Since it wasn't securely fastened, or wasn't securely fastened enough to the stern rail, the uh, apparatus began to collapse. You can kind of see it in some of the uh, video here, but eventually it got so bad that poor Marcel on the end ended up trying to hold the whole darn thing, and that was not a good deal. Uh, I went back to help him and just kicked the whole mess overboard, and then uh, we took turn. Uh, we took turns with. Uh, getting sore shoulders, holding the mast up until we could figure this mess out. So raising a mast really isn't that complicated. Uh, it can get really dangerous if you're not careful. Uh, but it is a necessity. This is, after all, supposed to be a trailerable boat. And it is. But it's not a day sailor either. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, Look online, get the best looking rig that you can see. There's plenty of them out there. But before you build it, have a good long look at how you're going to use it. You know, on some of these, they have um, baby stays that, uh, that keep the mass centered. I didn't need to do that for two reasons. And again, this may be a mistake, but I didn't need to do that for two reasons. One, I've got the metal poles that aren't going anywhere. They do wobble, though. And the other, I have a massive, uh, uh, I have a massive uh, mast uh, plate there that uh, is not going to get torn out. So, but that's an exception. That's not the rule. You, I can't overemphasize how important it is to take whatever you see online, do a lot of thinking, do a lot of looking, maybe even build a prototype, and then give it a partial try. Otherwise. It went well. Uh, it did take us all day. It was a family event. Uh, nothing really bad happened, and we did get the mast up. That's a success in any circumstance, is it not? Well, just so you know that not everything is perfect, we managed to get the lines a little bit confused. In keeping with the sailing traditions and all, I suppose the weight we used should have been a six-pack of beer. However, we do take our beer rather seriously around here, so we substituted an energy drink, designed and made in Florida, and I think you know which one that is. Nevertheless, it worked quite well. Just a little swing and a, and a tug. Sometimes we had to use the uh, ever-present pole, 
but nothing is perfect in this life. But we did get the mast up, and now we're sailing. <laughs>